have any of you guys used Caliban's hand since Zero 3.0 was released? The exotic is still very good at ad clearing and is on par with Arc 3.0 for the effects. So to make this exotic more clear to the masses, I'm going to show off a simple but nuketastic build that's capable of leveling areas in a single knife throw. Today's video is going to show you why Caliban's hand is still the top tier exotic to use with Zero 3.0 and how you can make full use of the explosion and chain their ignitions one after another. But you know what else is newtastic from start to finish? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications for more stuff like this in the future, as it goes a long way for me. So, to make this build a monster on the right hand, you will need to invest in both melee and discipline regen speed, so you can always have the option to feed into both. The key to achieving this is to always become radiant, and this here will allow you to infinitely throw knives and cause ignitions to trigger non-stop. It's simple in use, but this alone will support a number of other key abilities, stats and mods in the long run. So for aspects, we have on your marks where get an a precision kill, grant you and your allies a boost in handling of low speed. We then have knock em down, which allows blade barrage to produce more projectiles, but also allows us to get our knives back if we are radiant and get a kill with them. For fragments, we have ember of torches where power melee hits make you radiant, ember of ashes which grants us more scorched stacks on our target, Ember of Solace, where Radiant and Restoration effects apply to you have increased duration. Ember of Blistering, where defeating targets with Solar Ignitions grants grenade energy. And Ember of Eruption, where your Solar Ignitions has increased area effect. For stats, we have 16 Resilience, 18 Recovery and 100 Discipline, and 15 Strength. For key mods, you want Battle for Wealth for creating two elemental wells, Wall of Life for increased health regen via wells, Font of Mind for a plus 25% Solar Weapon buff, Seeking Worlds for allowing our worlds to attract to us, and Melee World Maker for creating worlds via powered melee. As explained, the main key points of the build is to utilize your throwing knife one shot capabilities and allow it alone to do the heavy lifting of the build overall. The ignition from a small minor kill will be enough to outright kill a major and sometimes ultra in one blast. And even if this isn't enough, the grenade can follow up and finish the target there and then, and thus allow you to one more combo ultras and bosses as you please. This is the best method of achieving maximum carnage with the exotic, and this simplicity for users allows you to turn your brain off and enjoy the fun from it. For weapons, I've formed with a few reliable items that best support the fragments of mod being used to its fullest. As an example, I have Deliverance with Demolitionist and Surrounded as its main perks. A great little weapon to have that will allow you to one-shot the majority of enemies you face while granting you a damage increase and grenade energy as you go. I tend to use this to quickly mop up mages and ultras while I struggle to finish off with my abilities alone, and you may want to do the same as well, as your knives are not strong enough to one shot a full health major. In the case of the build, it doesn't matter the primary you use, but for this setup, I would recommend you have something strong and reliable at all times, such as a fusion rifle. A secondary, we have the Amit AR2 with Ambitious Assassin and Incandescent, and for playing with the weapon and perk, it's actually very good in PvE though with a few issues here and there. The following combo allows us to have a bigger magazine on kills and spread scorch damage to others which will benefit our build over a given time frame. And this here means that we can build up abilities and scorch damage as long as you actively net kills with the weapon and this is one of those weapons worth investing in. However, the weapon feels a bit weak to use on higher end game content and you will need to have a damage buff to sustain it as long as possible. Luckily for our case, we have Radiant and Font of Might in play to help us achieve that. But if you don't have these, I recommend you try to get a damage perk instead of Incandescent. For Heavy, we have the Crying Mutiny Heavy Grenade Launcher, and I wanted to try this out just to see how it is. And honestly, it's okay to use, but I would rather use something more heavy hitting than this. The best way to look at this weapon is to use it as a way to build up stacks of scores within a few hits on a boss, and then use your abilities to trigger an ignition. It works a charm, and it's great, but outside of Scorch Ignition setups, it's not really all that amazing, so it's up to you if you want to use this one or not. For our stats section, this is very simple for everyone to do and understand, and you do not need to have high stats as shown just to achieve the same effects. Let's start with Discipline, which is at 100. Having our grenades at the highest stat of them all allows us to one with combat the bigger and much tougher combatants you face in whatever activity you play. This is important to take a note on since you maybe won't be strong enough to kill a major and above combatant in one shot, unless they are already weak and you then land a critical hit to finish them. If you decide to use the setup in anything legend tier, 
you'll soon see how much tougher it can become to cause a simple ignition from the throwing knife alone. So you will need to rely on it constantly if you ever decide to take the building to much harder content. With this being the case for future events, I would advise you to have Caliban's hands as solar and then attach an impact induction mod to the arm. With the mod now, you can get back around 20% grenade energy per knife kill, so it makes sense to add on a dedicated mod around this. Also, Ashes assets will come in handy down the line as well, so use that as well. For strength, as a start, we can see that I have left it at 50, even though this could go to 100 instead of discipline. Only reason I chose not to do so is because we already have fragments in place that will allow us to get our abilities back fairly quickly. If you have Gambler's Dodge and knock them down, then that's all you need to sustain the build, as triggering its effects is as simple as getting a one-shot body shot on throw. However, not everything will work in the end, since the knives being used are quite weak. I recommend you add on invigoration mods so that every time we create all power, we will get around 20% melee energy back. You then have 1 2 finisher for a 4 melee charge via finishers for 1 6 via super, and outreach for reduced melee cooldown via class ability use. For leftovers, we have Harmonic Cypher mod, which allows matching elemental weapons with subclass to create all the power, and Grenade Launcher Scavenger mod for more reserved ammo. Now, as we have covered the main topics of the setup we are using, here are the mods we have and how they overall affect the build. For Head, we have Resilience, Ashes the Assets, Harmonic Siphon, and Battle for World mod. Arm, we have Strength, Impact Induction, and World of Life mod. Chest, we have Resilience, Gagasus of Dampner, Thermal Shot Plating, and Font of Might mod. Leg with minor strength, grenade launcher scavenger, invigoration, and seeking wells mod. Mark with strength, outreach, one two finisher, and melee wallmaker mod. The sheer usefulness of the following exotic and all sorts of content is quite insane, and the effects are very large and wide if you can just trigger one explosion. When we last used the build, we focused primarily on using sky burners to get our melee back quickly, and also trigger constant ignitions by building up scorched hits. This method is still viable in today's content, but looking back at it, I've noticed that the build felt tied down to using just the exotic as its main crutch. And I know not many people will have the exotic for starters, nor will many of you want to use just a special weapon all the time. It lacked freedom to express its inner destruction for the user, which is not how I like to leave things for everyone. So I went back to the drawing board, I re-looked at the build from a different perspective, and made some changes to overall make the build more flexible in design. Instead of relying on just weapon, we can rely on multiple as long as they have the incandescent perk on them, which many of you has of now. We have also switched the build up to use the phone knives more and not rely on just the grenades to always get our melees back. This focus allows us to use the other dodge abilities instead and grenades and frees us up on always relying on set abilities that will make or break the build. And lastly, the mods used provide us the opportunity to go as destructive as possible and without the need of must have mods to make it work. This overall has allowed the build to absolutely nuke areas via knife, knife and grenade combo, or knife, grenade and incandescent combo. It's so powerful in fact that you can easily use this against champions alone and the damage in total will be enough to one shot them in the process or weaken them, but only in legend tier. Since its release, I haven't seen many people take up the exotic and use it for ad clearing like the way it was designed and I do wonder if this is because of Arc 3.0 has arrived and offered a clearer way of ad clearing. Arc 3.0 is simple and allows you to change the effects off one enemy, while Solo requires you to either use it how it is or one more combo to get the full picture. In the case of Caliban's, you have it both ways and you can use just a knife throw to trigger an explosion or use a grenade and knife together to cause an explosion. The latter is more useful in mini bosses to bosses in general as it won't kill them outright but will do significant damage. What I'm trying to say is Caliban is an amazing hunter exotic that I feel many people have put down and forgotten about instead of giving it a try for longer. And I know Arc 3.0 Jolt Effect has made Caliban's feel less involved, but what Soul and Caliban has over Arc is its damage and ignition effect from Prot. The damage you can do from a single explosion is huge and is a very noticeable one against all sorts of combatants. The truth is Caliban's is and always will be the best exotic a hunter can use for simple ad clearing as it takes up just one ignition to wipe out a room. With this build, you can build into it more, expand or keep how it is and it will always make sure it does the thing it's meant to do, even when you run out of other options. Now lastly, all I ask for is that you don't use this in master or GMs. 
master perhaps if you can pull it off but gms no it's a lot harder to pull off the scorch and ignition combo and enemies are a lot more tougher so you can try if you like if you have an idea in mind but gms is a absolute no-no master is the limit but legend is where you want to aim for so if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on twitter to keep up to date with destiny content if you like that kind of stuff the link is down below but once again thanks for stopping by stay safe and i'll see you all next one